Becky, it's time. It's time? It's time. Hi guys, welcome to episode three of Alive at Five. Today we're gonna to learn about raptors of Jackson Hole and beyond. Let's get to it. The two largest owls in Jackson Hole are the great gray owl and the great horned owl. Great horned owls are the heaviest. Great gray owls are the tallest. Owly is Teton Raptor Center's oldest resident at 18 years old. Great horned owls are also the heaviest owl in the lower 48 states, topping out at four pounds. Great horned owls are one of the best owls to have in your neighborhood because these guys will readily take down skunks. While it is true that these guys could take down an adult skunk, it's also a little bit misleading to think that they're gonna go after your dogs and cats. Could they? Maybe. Has it happened? Absolutely. But should you be overly concerned? Not really. That said, if you have a pet that weighs less than 10 pounds, there are a lot of reasons they should be indoors with you, the least of which is great horned owls, skunks, coyotes, possums, the threat of disease. There are a lot of dangers for those little guys outside. Owly was struck by a vehicle here in Wilson, Wyoming back in 2002 at just 10 months old. It damaged her left wing, leaving her unable to fly, so she's not releasable back into the wild. In her lifetime, Owly has met nearly half a million people in over 4,000 programs. As we said, this is the heaviest owl in the lower 48, not the tallest. That award goes to the Great Gray. Sarah? Thanks, Becky. Now I'd like to introduce everyone to our resident Great Gray Owl, Tyga. Like Owly, Tyga here is no longer able to fly. Her injuries occurred in the wild, in her nest, and we believe it was predated by a black bear. Tyga here hatched in 2016. In the wild, most raptors don't make it past their first year, about 70% in fact. While great horned owls are the heaviest owls in the lower 48, great gray owls are the tallest owls on earth. These guys can reach over two feet tall, including that long tail you see. They may be tall, but their prey is small. Ooh, a rhyme! Small rodents like pocket gophers and small birds are what seems to make up most of their diet. If you're feeling super nerdy, go ahead and go to our website and check out our research page where we've been studying great gray owls for over eight years. Barn owls and barred owls are often confused for one another, but as you can see, they're really quite different. Barred owls are a super cool species of owl not really found in Jackson Hole, but they are found on the northern reaches of the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. You primarily find these guys in the eastern U.S. and then in the Pacific Northwest. What's really fun about barred owls is that they're a bird often found in riparian areas around water. Matter of fact, some of his favorite food is crayfish. Hemlock has been with Teton Raptor Center's education team for almost two years. He was picked up as a baby by well-intentioned humans and imprinted, so he's not releasable because he doesn't have the fear he's supposed to have. Barred owls get their name from the really cool brown bars on their chest. We would consider these a medium-sized owl. Hemlock here weighs just under two pounds. Folks often get barn owl and barred owl confused, and I think it's just because they sound similar. They actually live very different lifestyles. Barred owls tend to hang out more in the forest and barn owls more over open fields. Barred owls are one of many raptor species that will readily utilize nest boxes. Put a box in a tree for these guys and say goodbye to your rodent problems. Barred owls do have a cousin here in Jackson Hole, the great gray owl. Manzana is Teton Raptor Center's resident deaf barn owl. She's with us because she cannot hear. While barn owls are really unusual to find here in Jackson Hole, these guys live on every continent except for Antarctica. These guys are huge consumers of small rodents. And guess where these guys love to live? Old barns and abandoned buildings. And unlike most raptor species, these guys have a little bit difference in appearance when it comes to male and female. Girls like Manzana here have a little bit of color on their chest behind those spots, while the boys are mainly white. And it's worth noting, barn owls do not hoot. The sound they make sounds like the same noise that Becky makes when a mouse runs over her feet. Manzana here has one of the coolest names of any bird on our education team. Her name, Manzana, means apple in Spanish, and that comes from the fact that her face looks like if you cut an apple in half and looked at the seeds inside. Long-eared owls and short-eared owls are another smallish species of owl found throughout Jackson Hole. Short-eared owls tend to be more out in the open, 
hunting for voles and small mammals in the sage. Long-eared owls tend to hang out more in the woods and they are often confused with young great horned owls. The two smallest species of owl found in Jackson Hole are two of the smallest species of owl found on earth. Northern pygmy owls frequent aspen stands and love to hunt chickadees. They might weigh only 40 grams. Flammulated owls are a species that wasn't confirmed in Jackson Hole until 2015, thanks to Teton Raptor Center's research team. Flammulated owls are super unique. They like to live in old forests, at least 40 feet up in the trees, and they migrate, making them much more difficult to study than other species. Northern sawwet owls are another super tiny species of owl found here in Jackson Hole and throughout the United States. These guys top out at between four and six inches tall. This saw wet owl is currently being cared for in our rehab clinic. It is destined for education because of some wing injuries that healed in a way he'll never be able to fly. Teton Raptor Center admits small raptor species like kestrels and small owls year round that have been attacked by people's pets, especially cats. They end up with infections and can die from that. There are four common species of falcon in Jackson Hole. Peregrines are the largest, followed by prairie falcon, merlins, and the smallest falcon in North America, the American kestrel. American kestrels are the smallest falcon found in North America. Unlike most raptors, these guys really look different, male and female. Frost here, the male kestrel, has blue on his wings, and Beatrix, the female, has got brown and black all the way across. Another cool difference between male and female, the males have spots on their chest and the females have stripes. But from the neck up, they look almost identical. Frost is the victim of frostbite, getting stuck to a frozen pipe in Texas during an ice storm. He lost the tip of two talons and the end of his left wing, so he's unable to fly. Beatrix is a retired falconry bird. She lives at Teton Raptor Center part-time, still residing under a falconry permit. Falcons are a really cool and unique category of raptors. In North America, all falcons have a vertical eye stripe on their face that blocks glare. Falcons are aerial hunters. Their specialty is grabbing birds, bats, and bugs right out of the sky. The fastest animal on earth is the peregrine falcon, having been clocked at 242 miles per hour. Hunter is Teton Raptor Center's resident peregrine falcon. This guy hatched in 2016 on the top of the Woodman Life Tower in Omaha, Nebraska. He joined our education team about nine weeks later due to eye infections in both of his eyes that made him miss most of the lessons that his parents had to teach him. There are eight types of hawks found in Jackson Hole. One of those hawks is not here in the summertime, the rough-legged hawk. Those guys nest north of the Arctic Circle. Teton Raptor Center's research team has been studying the movement of rough-legged hawks for several years now. Check out these cool maps. Another rather unusual hawk for this area is the ferruginous hawk. Ferruginous hawks will often nest on the ground in sage. Red-tailed hawks are the most common hawk in North America. That's because they're willing to live just about anywhere, along the forest edge, hunting in the fields, in neighborhoods, or even in cities. Though a red-tailed hawk's tail isn't red until they're about 18 months old, it's still pretty easy to spot a juvenile. Red-tailed hawks have a really cool band of color across their lower abdomen. Their cousin is the Swainson's hawk. Swainson's hawks reside in Jackson Hole for the summer months, and they have one of the coolest migration stories of any land migrator. Those guys spend the winter down on the grasslands of South America in Argentina. They travel 7,000 miles each way because Jackson Hole is just that great. Northern Harriers are another very unique category of hawk. Harriers like to dwell over open landscapes and they will use a facial disc like an owl to hunt for small rodents down in the bush. Exhibitors consist of three separate hawks found in Jackson Hole. The Northern Goshawk, the largest of the three, the Cooper's Hawk, and the smallest is the sharp shinned Hawk. They're only about the size of a robin. All three of these species like to dwell in the forest they have very long tails for fast movement and agility to catch other birds. Hardiman is the victim of a car strike on the interstate in North Alabama. He can't see out of his right eye. That affects his depth perception and his ability to defend himself from the right should anyone try to come and steal his meal. Hardiman weighs about two and a quarter pounds. 
Our resident female red-tailed hawk, Ruby, weighs in at just over three pounds. Osprey are a large black and white raptor found almost exclusively around water. About 95% of their diet is fish. Osprey may appear to be the size of an eagle in the air, but turns out they weigh about half what even the smallest of eagles may weigh. Osprey are often victims of baling twine and fishing line entanglement. If you're a farmer or know any farmers, please encourage them to dispose of baling twine properly. And if you're out fishing, even if that line's not yours, if you come across fishing line in a tree, please help by cleaning it up. Osprey are a migratory bird here in Jackson Hole. They show up in early mid-April and leave again in early October to hang out along the Gulf Coast for the winter months. Osprey have double jointed wrists. They're able to hover over the water, spot fish down below using polarized lenses in their eyes, then dive straight down into the water to grab their prey. Osprey are some of the best fishermen on planet Earth. Some studies suggest they catch fish about seven out of 10 attempts. We have two species of eagle in the United States, bald eagles, which are found anywhere near water, and golden eagles, which are primarily found in the open plains and mountain areas of the Western US and a few isolated populations in the East. Bald eagles have a really large head and a huge beak compared to golden eagles. Bald eagles don't always have this gorgeous white head and tail. River here is seven years old and she's still got a little bit of brown mixed in. Turns out when they hatch, they're brown from head to toe. And in years two through five, they have a lot of white modeling on their body and under their wings. The white head doesn't really fill in until they're between age five to seven. So if you see a bald eagle out in the wild and it's got that gorgeous white head and tail, you know that it's a mature bird, able to have young and at least five years old, likely closer to seven. River joined Teton Raptor Center's education team back in June of 2015. She has damage to her left wrist from a bacterial infection that got in from polluted waters. So she's unable to control her left wing in flight, leaving her unable to hunt. So bald eagles are huge and powerful birds. They actually choose to steal first. Given the option, they're gonna watch Osprey do the work, then swoop in to take their meal. Though bald eagles are about the same size as a golden eagle, they go for much smaller prey. These guys primarily head for things like fish, ducks, and snakes, anything along the waterways. They fall into the fishing eagle category. Thanks, Becky. As we just talked about, golden eagles and bald eagles tend to be about the same size. But Gus here, our resident golden eagle, is gonna be a little bit smaller than River, our resident bald eagle, because he's a boy. In the United States, eagles can range in weight if they're male from five to nine pounds and females from nine to 13 pounds. Gus here is a 15 year old golden eagle. He weighs in at about six pounds and he joined our education team in 2007. Golden eagles are one of three species of raptor in the US that have feathering all the way down to their toes. Golden eagles are substantially more powerful than bald eagles. They can take down prey as big as bighorn sheep. Wait, what? How did they do that? Golden eagles knock their prey off cliffs by turning their body into a cannonball. Hey Sarah, you got any fast facts? I sure do, Becky. First, these guys' closest living relative in the U.S. is a red-tailed hawk. Wait, like cousins? Yeah, Becky, like cousins. And another really cool fast fact about golden eagles, they can see movement at up to two miles away. Becky. That is a lot of learning. And it's summer! Thanks again to the Teton Village Association for sponsoring these programs. We have one week left where we will learn all about what you didn't know you wanted to know and needed to know about raptors. Tune in!